No, no, no. Nobody has ever said that in the context of Buggy the Clown. I like that you deny people can be horny for Buggy, but it's all right to be horny for Galdino or whatever his name is, Mr. Three. No. (laughs) It's season four of King of the What Now. Before the world government, we ain't gonna bow. We're gonna rescue Rob and unite the crew. We're not gonna stop till our mission is through. Spanum's a dick, yeah, you know it's true. We wanna punch his face till he's black and blue. These government agents think they're justice, but regarding their tactics, I'm rather disgusted. The straw hats are pumped up and fists are flying. There's a hairy kaiju and lightning strike and hearts burning hot and passionate flames with phantom blades. The giraffe is slain. Luffy is dashing. His skin's all red. Don't get in the way or you'll end up dead. The straw hats, yeah, they're on the attack. So now Soga King, burn down that flag! Hello, fellow adventurers of the Grand Line, and welcome to episode 82 of King of the What Now, a One Piece discussion podcast starting from the very beginning. As always, I'm your host, Joel, wishing you a happy new year, and also, I've been trapped inside of a fridge. There's only one thing to do, eat my way out. (laughs) No, you're going to gain so much weight. Hey everybody, Happy New Year, I'm Kat, I'm the ghost of the show, and today I am a ghost from an alternate universe! Ooh, Ooh. here we're all mob bosses. So there's no rice cakes or, like, special grand prizes or sick panda men? I mean, there could be those things, but mostly dark just mafia stuff. mob boss mafia versions. Oh, okay. These are my mafia rice cakes. <laughs> all right. Hello, everyone, and we're just going to go straight into the chatting with the hosts segment. I'm going to be up front. Uh, Some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is stuff that happened a couple of weeks ago and or things that I'm planning on doing because this last week since we last recorded, oh, man, I have been busy at work. So I don't actually have that much from this week, but I I found a a couple of things that I want to talk about and plug anyways. So we can get into that. Catherine, do you want to tell us about anything that you've been up to? Yes. I finally sat down and watched Hasman Hotel, uh, the pilot of which was released back in October. Um, we're actually recording this in November, even though it's not going to go up until January 2nd. So I, I wasn't as late to that party as it sounds. Sure. Um, but it took me a while to get to it. And I liked it. I definitely think that the demographic it was aimed toward was like me, but when I was 13. And so not all of the jokes landed as well as they might have otherwise, but I did, the whole time I was watching it, I did keep thinking, man, 13-year-old me would have been all over this. So for that, I enjoyed it. Absolutely. And if you're listening and you somehow haven't heard of Hasbin Hotel, uh, I assume that it's more popular than our little uh, amateur podcast, but... It is on YouTube, the first episode, and I believe that's where all of the episodes are going to be. The creator wants it to be free, and is it some kind of, like, independent thing? Like, they kind of, like, did it on their own without the backing of a major company? Yeah, so this was created by Vivzy Pop, who is a popular artist and animator, uh, primarily on YouTube. And she decided that she wanted to get a group of people together and make a series completely for free. Uh, that is accessible to anyone. Okay, cool, yeah. So YouTube at one point stepped in when the hype got big enough and was like, do you want to make this a YouTube Red show and have all of our resources to play with? And she was like, nope. (laughs) <laughs> yes, absolutely. And again, if you haven't heard of it, uh, check it out if you want. It does contain, uh, you know, R-rated language. They dropped the F-bomb a couple of times in that first episode. So, you know, if you're sensitive to that, then maybe it's not for you. Or if you're younger, you know, maybe stay away from it. Yeah. But Well, and the plot is that they're all characters in hell. So they're bad people. So they make racist jokes. They make homophobic jokes. They make misogynist jokes. So a lot of people are upset with that, which I think is fair, but also the idea is that they're supposed to be bad people. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, that is a larger question that I'm not really, I don't want to tackle right now. I don't think either of us are competent to answer it. What I will say is that I think it does kind of, in the context of the show, make sense. And I personally didn't feel as though they crossed many borders. It seemed like they made at most one kind of joke. Like, it wasn't just 30 minutes of hating on the gays or 
you know, the black population or anything like that. It was like usually one character would have one line that was like, ooh, yikes, but not every character was uh, expanding, expounding that. Yeah. Oh, a nice person wouldn't say that. That's right. These are not nice people. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, it was fun. Uh, the voice acting is incredible. When you hear something is a independent project or it's a free project that's going up on YouTube, you don't always think of it in the same way you would think of a professional like Cartoon Network show or a Nickelodeon show, but they put so much work into this and they got some really outstanding talent on board. Absolutely, yeah. I was kind of lukewarm when I saw the preview for it, but then Catherine watched the first episode and she showed me a clip, and let's talk about that in a second, but eventually I got to the point where I was like, let's, I'm just going to watch this. Because I'm asking, I'm, I was asking you so many questions about like, what does this mean? What's that character? And what's this? What's that? And then I just, I watched it and yeah, I wouldn't say that it's like a 10 out of 10 for me. I think I would have liked it a little bit better if I were a bit younger, but I really do like it. I especially like the animation style, I guess, more so than, I guess, the setting or or the plot. It is extremely brightly colored, which mm-hmm. is like exactly your jam. Yeah, well, but then there's also the joke when she's reading like her script or like her notes and her eyes are moving like slowly like a typewriter and you can hear the click, 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 click. And I just, I really like that. I love things that you can only do really in cartoons or that would be weird in live action. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I do absolutely need to point out about the show is that if you don't like the Radio Demon slash Alistar, then I'm sorry, we just can't be friends because that's one of the best characters. He is my favorite part of this uh, show so far. Sorry, I was going to say um, first episode, but I forgot the word for pilot. That's what it is. It's a pilot. He's my favorite part of the pilot. <laughs> I'm so tired, you guys. <laughs> November is a hard month. It it really is for all of us. But he's just, he he's a, a wild card. You don't know what he's up to. Is he evil? Is he good? Is he pretending to be evil but secretly good? All this other stuff. He's a deal maker, which is my favorite uh, archetype of all time. And just, he has the perfect response. People will say something that's just like completely out of left field. And there's just like half a second. And then... No. So if we're during this episode, if Catherine and I ever like one of us says no, and then the other one just starts laughing hilariously, it's because we are specifically quoting and remembering that scene. Yeah, I think my favorite is, uh, do I look like some kind of clown to you? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Which like, buggy. Yeah, I just imagine Buggy in that scene. But no, Alistair's my favorite. I think I mentioned a couple of episodes ago that Bill Cipher was the whole reason I watched Gravity Falls and then he didn't show up until like the end of the first season or something. Alistair is Bill Cipher, but he's in it from the very first episode. So I'm going to keep watching just for more Alistair content. Mm-hmm. So the only other thing, really quickly, we did uh, find out that the local library has Princess Kaguya, which is a movie that I'm only really aware of because of the Blade Looking Thieves podcast. I'm going to give them a shout out anytime that I can. Uh, So Catherine and I are going to watch it, and the next time we record, we'll probably have a couple of things to say, but it won't be a full-length episode, I don't think. Mm. But that's on the upcoming things to work on. The RPG is taking a backseat. Like I said, work has gotten pretty busy, but I have plans on what I want to implement next, and I really hope that the next time we record, I'll have news on that. I don't want it to just die quietly in the background like some other projects. But I have one thing that I really need to talk about, and I need to hype, because the whole reason that I started this chatting with the host section was because I wanted to be able to bring passion into things. I love One Piece, but some episodes are not as good as others. And I don't always, I can't always be like, yes, this episode was so good. But Black Clover, oh my God, I it hit its stride. It took a while. I've now caught up pretty much. I only have like three more episodes on Verve or Crunchyroll uh, to watch before I've gotten all the ones that are currently out. The whole reason I started watching the show is because of a character named Mario Leona, who doesn't show up till like 70 episodes in. Mario Leona. Mario Mario Leona. Leona. Say that a million times. Hey, they made that exact joke in uh, uh, Petite Clover, actually. But her whole thing is that she's this super powerful, fire-based woman, and she just sounded, you know, cocky as hell. She sounded confident. She sounded really cool. So, like, all of those are up my alley. Bakugo's my favorite from... Uh, My Hero, for example. I really like Roy Mustang from Full Metal Alchemist, so I thought I was going to like her. But she's just even better than I could have possibly imagined. She's like 
Bowser incarnate and she like is constantly like in all shadow while there's like fires erupting behind her and she's like I'm gonna destroy you and her eyes are glowing red and she's a competent female character in a shonen who's not sexualized who's not belittled her whole thing isn't like oh there's this man who's super important to me and I'll do anything for him like she is just pure competence in everything that she's in and i love her yes and if she somehow becomes problematic later just don't tell us right now where we are we don't know (laughs) yes absolutely i think i'm gonna transition to the manga uh i don't know if black clover is my favorite i've said that a couple of times now but i do think that it is better than i had initially heard reports of on on twitter for example well and i love you but you are basically incapable of starting a thing without finishing it yeah that's mostly true absolutely but uh no so i met i finally met the character that i was excited about and if you follow me on twitter you probably have seen me talk about her at least once or twice because i i have many screenshots from black clover but i have a lot of them are specifically her yes let me see here uh buff brash lady fire powers very loud and energetic this is checking all the boxes Absolutely. The only thing that can make it better is if she had some kind of like magical girl transformation, you know? That was a weird thing to say, but that's no, okay. No, it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't. Joel, cut that out. Cut out the part about you being self-conscious about it, not the thing that you said. Haha, <laughs> when you say cut that out, you have to leave it in, so haha, <laughs> no, you can cut it out. The other thing that's great is by watching these episodes and getting to the part where she was introduced, we also got what I think is the best scene in the entire show. Uh, Slight spoilers for Black Clover, so if you were listening to this and you don't want spoilers, just skip ahead. There's time codes. But there was this big mages battle, this tournament, and basically there's two characters who are brothers who have not gotten along for some time now, and during their battle, something snaps inside one of these brothers, and he just, like his magic changes and he gets all like i must kill him and you're like oh this is this is really bad what the hell these are supposed to be people who are basically competing to see who should get selected for a promotion not like these are people who want to kill each other and when the main character asta realizes that things have gone seriously bad and that his clan member his uh, member of the black bulls could potentially be killed there's this awesome scene of every single member of the black bulls who's there all just like immediately surrounding this guy who is who's gone completely blood crazy and they have their swords pointed at his throat they have like fireballs they have lightning they have strings wrapped around him like they all have these wacky powers but they're just like don't you dare touch our friend and i am here for that that is why i love shonen anime so that was a great scene and i watched and that was the moment that i knew that black clover could achieve greatness Also, by the time this episode comes out, maybe I'll have finally gotten around to making the YouTube video, but I do plan on making my premiere on YouTube with a video about my five favorite fights in Black Clover and why I like them as opposed to some of the other fights. So if that's out, I'll put a link in the description. But if it's not out, then I guess you're just going to have to wait for future updates. YouTube is hard because podcasting is like, boop a doop a doo I fart into a mic. But YouTube is like, I fart into a mic and then I have to like put it i have to have some sort of visual and maybe i have to edit it do i edit video how does that work so we'll figure it out exactly i do also want to point out there's another great character from black clover named zora i think i've talked a little bit too much about black clover right here but he's just great because pointy (laughs) yeah that's exactly it no he's really great because the whole thing about most shonen i think dragon ball started this trend maybe something earlier than that started this trend but they'll meet bad guys who are like Oh, uh, my mm, sister uh, ran away and that traumatized me. Now I hate everyone who has sisters. And then the main character beats him and then they, I don't know, maybe rekindle that relationship with their sister or whatever, right? A lot of bad guys become good guys. A lot of enemies become friends in Shonen. But Asta embodies that in like a way that I almost feel doesn't happen in, say, One Piece or My Hero or, or Bleach. It happens a bit in Naruto, but... I really like it, and the thing about Zora is that he went from hating everyone to being mostly okay with everyone, and it was because of Asta, and he also uses trap magic because, well, A, he doesn't have that much magical power, so he has to be kind of cunning, but also that was his whole motif, was he was basically hunting these, like, fake magic knight people, a lot like uh, Hero Killer Stain from My Hero, And I just love that now that he's a good guy, he's still the trickster, underhanded, I don't care what I have to do as long as it means that I get victory. He's just 
he's really great and his whole personality is basically like unflappable and i mean that's not entirely true there are times when he gets uh, a little shaken up or scared or whatever but i just i really like his personality he's great right and as i said he's pointy he has a whole mouthful of sharp fangs and that checks my boxes so he's my favorite perfect and all right are we ready to get back to the main episode nope because guess what what's that this is a new year's episode it is we are chatting with the hosts What are your goals for the new year? What do you want to accomplish? Yeah, so one of the things that this last week has been kind of holding me up from, you know, working on the RPG or doing like the nano thing is the fact that I've been trying to catch up on the backlog on our podcast. We had a couple of bonus episodes that I added to edit and then the cold opens and there was this and that and the other thing. So one of the things I want to try to do is I want to try to stay on top of my stuff. I want to try to stay organized. I want to do things in a timely manner. I want to get better sleep. That's not something that I always do super great. And I just want to be able to play the balancing act of responsibilities and kind of fun things and then growing the podcast and creative endeavors. So that's kind of what my focus is mostly going to be on, I think. I like that, trying to just kind of get your stuff together in general. Mm -hmm. I am always trying to get my stuff together. And because we both have ADD, you and I, we are not great at it. So yes, I would say getting more sleep, being more on top of things is a huge goal for me. I told myself that I was going to have written an entire book by the time Emerald City Comic Con of this year rolls around. Mm. Um, We have bought our Emerald City Comic Con tickets, and my book isn't done, but we still have a couple months as of recording this and as of when this will be released. So I'm hoping that by the time this is uh, released, I'll have made progress, and by the time we get to Comic Con, the book will be done. Because guess what? Things get done if you put yourself on deadlines. (laughs) That's a trick I learned from work. (laughs) Well, and when you say have a book, you don't mean published. You more mean the first draft. Right. I want it written and done. It doesn't have to be published. Nobody has to read it. But actually having gone from start to finish and not just rewriting the first three chapters over and over. (laughs) Yeah, I really want to get back into the writing thing. My life goes through ebbs and flows. I, you know, will write a bunch for, you know, one or two months and then I'll kind of get too busy and then it'll be a while before I get back to it. And so what I want to do is I want to try to get back into the habit of it. And the thing that stopped me from participating, not, it didn't stop me from participating, but it kind of caused me to slow down until my momentum became zero was I didn't feel like I had anything that I wanted to explore. And so I was just writing what felt like nothing. So I really want to try to get back into the idea of kind of thinking of ideas and exploring those ideas and actually figuring out why the idea of writing is interesting to me and what I could maybe try to emulate from authors that I really like. Why do I find One Piece so fascinating? Why do I find Needful Things interesting? What's so funny about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? So if I can kind of figure out the elements that I like of those and then try and figure out like, oh, this is why this book is really funny to me. Maybe if I write like this, people will find my book funny as well. And maybe humor is the important thing to me about writing. So yeah, just trying to you know, meditate on top of a mountain for three months without any food or water, and then I will come back a skeleton, but also an enlightened skeleton who knows how to write. You will be able to write with both hands at the same time, and each hand will be writing a different story. Mm -hmm. One of them can even write occasional phrases in other languages. Oh, that languages you don't speak? No, languages that I speak. Me gustaría un gato negro. I also really like the black cat. I would like. That's the future tense. Anyways, <laughs> so that's that. Uh, Calling me out. Do you have any other goals for uh, 2020? Uh, yeah, well, well, well. Let's talk about that now. We just trained for and ran our first full marathon. And like we kind of alluded to, it kind of sucked. Uh, There were a lot of tall uphills that we weren't prepared for. I had been recovering from some injuries, so I had to walk more than I wanted to. So 2020 is going to be a year of training for the next marathon, which will be the Disney World Marathon in 2021, pew, 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 which I'm very excited for. So yeah, that's that's my big goal is I want to get myself strong enough so that I can run without injuring myself. Absolutely. I would love to try and do a, a better time the next time that I run a marathon. And so I'm also excited to continue doing this running thing. The last time we did, first time I did a half marathon, 
I took a couple of months break afterwards and then it felt like I was starting from ground zero so what I'm doing and have been doing is I've been trying to make sure that I don't go back to level zero mm-hmm. I want to retain some of the uh the drive that I had before yeah the guy who wrote our marathon training plan Hal Higdon also wrote a here's how to recover from your marathon plan so that's a five-week plan we're going through that and then he has a here's what to do during the winter so that you don't lose your running progress plans we'll follow that for 13 weeks yeah then- it is cold as as Dickens. Uh, something very cold. It's as cold as Aokiji out there, all right? <laughs> it is as cold as Noelle has a sister who uses ice magic, I think, but I can't remember because I haven't gotten that far in the story yet, damn it. <laughs> Excellent. And I think that we could go to One Piece. Yeah, let's go back to the regular episode. Okay, so we just finished watching five episodes of the anime, 288 through 292. The super, super short, succinct summary is... It was mostly Frankie versus Fukuro, and then we also got the Zapang Boss Luffy alternate universe uh, stories, because what a coincidence, we actually watched the episodes that took place in One Piece New Year's right before recording our New Year's episode. I did not plan that, but that's amazing that it happened out that way. Okay. And so what you need, perhaps, is a slightly longer succinct summary, one that has more details than just there was a fight and two episodes of filler. So, let's go. In these episodes, Frankie got the spotlight. He fought Fukuro, but it's all right. They were both pretty wacky. They both fought hard, but Frankie took the win. Fukuro seeing stars. Chopper's opponent is Kumadori. His rumble ball ran out, and we started to worry. He took another, but it borked the effect. He couldn't control his forms. What a wreck! Just before he was taken out, he chomped a third. What's that about? In a flashback, we heard from the doctor the drugs would turn him into a monster. Meanwhile, against Jabber and Kaku, Zoro and Usopp were trying to talk through how to solve their problem being stuck together. Zoro thought of amputation to break the tether. Usopp objected, and now the man had a new idea. This was his plan. For his third sword, he would use Usopp. The unbeatable combo could not be stopped. Finally, I should probably mention the filler that took place in another dimension. We return once more to Japan. And honestly, these episodes were lame. Buggy was bad. Of course he was. He had more schemes, just because. In the end, it was standard business, but this story took place during Christmas. So that was uh, your succinct summary for episode 82. And last episode of the podcast, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to continue to do this. But you know what? I get a rush. I get a thrill every time I write down these stupid Raps, And so they're just going to continue until people give noise complaints, and then I will continue doing it. This is my hill to die on. I mean, it's your podcast, so you are the superstar. No, maybe it's our podcast. If you wanted to, you know, contribute or... Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> if you wanted to start adding content to this podcast so I didn't have to continue carrying the weight... No, 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 no. If You're you... right. No. Boss, Luffy is cool. I like <laughs> his hat. He's really good at punching. How you feel about that? There you go. I contributed. Uh, so, like, three of these five episodes we just watched were filler. No, two were filler. Oh, I thought there were three of the Boss Luffy. No, there was the one where Pops was sick, and then there was the other one about the rice cakes. So they had a Christmas episode, and then they had the uh, the New Year's episode. Okay, they just lasted so long that they felt like they took three episodes. As I alluded to in the succinct summary... I did not like these two Boss Luffy episodes. I was kind of enamored with the first two because I was like, oh, look at this. They have kind of a continuity sort of AU and they're giving the characters interesting things to do. But these ones just felt like, okay, we're going to do that again, but we're just going to kind of rush through the plot and like it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. And Buggy's going to insist that someone owes him a debt, even though that person doesn't owe him a debt? I don't know. Joel, I hate to cut you off here, but we did our Stampede episode already. We're talking about this Boss Luffy AU. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I... So, I feel like the charm of these episodes is seeing the Straw Hats in different circumstances. 
And like, I love that. I think Nami as the head of this like continuously financially struggling restaurant is great. I like Sanji as her head chef who beats people up because they eat too much food. Every time Usopp shows up on screen, it's there's trouble, there's trouble. Yes, exactly. Because he's like the boy who cried wolf. But in this version, all of his wolves are real. (laughs) <laughs> That's a good tagline for a story. In this universe, all his wolves are real. <laughs> uh, but I'm bored of Buggy. I don't need Buggy to keep being the bad guy. They introduced Mr. Three in these episodes. Why couldn't they make Crocodile the bad guy? He'd be too competent for this group of people. Yeah. You know, like, this Luffy is too laid back and he doesn't really have any dreams other than protecting the people, so I don't know if he'd be able to power a friendship through a Sandman's power. That's fair. But, yeah, I just... They could have Vivi give Crocodile an impassioned speech about how a country is its people or whatever. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, Buggy, he's okay. I get why some people like him, but at the same time, that's four episodes, man. That's four separate schemes that he's now tried to hatch, and... Yeah, I I don't have a whole lot to say about these episodes. I would rather just kind of, for the most part, ignore them and move on. I do have one single discussion point before we move on to the actual canon stuff. All right. So at the very end of the first episode, when it was revealed, surprise, it was a Christmas episode. um, Nami had Christmas decorations up in her restaurant. And I think it was Luffy went... What are all those for? And Nami said, in another country, they celebrate a holiday called Christmas Eve. So if this AU takes place in a One Piece version of Japan, does that mean the AU has a version of the West where like Christmas is? What kind of people live there? What kind of wacky adventures could you get into have people with One Piece powers? Perverts in the West. People who build warships and they eat hamburgers and drink cola all the time. That's what exists in the West of Zipang. Zipang, I actually, they only say it once at the beginning of each episode, and by the time we're done watching the episodes, I've already forgotten, so I apologize. I think it's Zipang, because it's supposed to sound like Japan, but now I want a hamburger, so I guess we can move on to the actual bulk of (laughs) Well, no, I I think that's an interesting question, but I just, I don't really know what else we can extrapolate, you know? Uh, There aren't too many characters who feel like super stereotypically American other than Frankie. So yeah, maybe the next uh, time we go back to the Boss Luffy specials, maybe we will have Frankie and his Frankie family over in the the West, the West. and they've now, they're coming over and they're trying to tell Japan to open the borders. Yes. <laughs> Stop having the country be closed. Uh, no, and I say the West and not America specifically because A... This takes place in a time period where I don't know if America was a country at that point, but also B, there are lots of countries that celebrate Christmas that are not America. Yeah, we don't have to be America-centric here. Exactly. Uh, Maybe that's where All Might is. You know, All Might and the 1A students, they're in uh, the west of Japan. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Beautiful. And to the east, we have the mysterious Black Clover. Asta is his name. <laughs> I'm so glad that you picked up his name after I've watched 105 episodes <laughs> of that show. Have you watched 105 episodes of that show? Oh, I technically skipped one that was a filler episode from Charmy's point of view. But yeah, I've seen 104 episodes of that show. My God. Uh, you could also have to the east, you could have the hidden shinobi of the leaf. And then you could also have the alchemists. Nice. I mean, just make it all one shared universe. Why not? I'm down. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, we got two-ish fights in these episodes. What did you think of them? The main fight is the Frankie Fukuro stuff. And for the most part, I liked it a lot. It had its moments where it was serious and Frankie was actually in danger. You had moments where it had that one piece wackiness that I feel only Oda can pull pull off. And uh, it was pretty interesting. And it it did kind of raise the question like, is this owl boy a threat? Okay, yeah, he can move really fast. How's Frankie going to counter that? And okay, uh, how is he going to fight an opponent who can fly in the air and that sort of thing? And what happens to Frankie's fighting style when he runs out of cola? What happens to Frankie's fighting style when he ends up underwater? Um, th- this fight had some of my favorite Frankie moments in it. Mm-hmm. The scene where he runs out of cola and he needs Chopper to get him more 
is just delightful because Chopper keeps throwing him things that aren't cola because he has to open the fridge really quick and get the stuff out and close the <laughs> fridge before Kumidori gets out. Um, and Frankie yells something like, what's that look on your face that says, I wonder what else will happen if I try other stuff? <laughs> so that's really funny. Um, I really like Fukuro and Frankie punching each other and being like, you're just a bra. You're just a pair of socks. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like Frankie doesn't get a lot of screen time as you continue through the anime, but I feel like the fights he does have all kind of are centered on like the manliness of the punches as a central theme. Yeah, it's sort of like, I'm not going to try to do anything fancy like dodging your attacks or, or uh, blocking them. I'm just going to take them head on. And I'm going to prove that I'm sturdier than you. Exactly. So having that come up now was good. It kind of clues us into who Frankie is as a person. I Certainly. think that Oda uses fights to reveal a lot about characters and how they think and how they interact with the world. Certainly. And Especially their preview fights. Like the very first time someone has a series serious, long, drawn out, that's going to be the moment when they put like their full abilities kind of on display. And so I think that was true of Usopp being very cowardly and like his leg shaking, but still grabbing Kuro's leg. I think you got that with Sanji versus uh, Gein, you know, uh, and Pearl. And so, yeah, I think that Frankie does kind of shine in this moment and he doesn't quite shine as brightly later except for in a couple of places i can think of but my goodness is it satisfying when his eyes start to glow and the lightning strikes he's a little like super yes he's finally powered up <laughs> um but his personality changes depending on what powers him <laughs> yeah so what was the first one was the first one vegetable juice and that's when he was feeling fresh i think yeah that was fresh okay and yeah he was like yeah, it was like a sissy kind of punch. It was like a really, really you know, light, like tap. a limp punch is how I would describe it. And then what was the next one? He was a farmer after he drank what? Tea. tea. Oh, it was tea. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I've had a long day on the crops. Let's just sit back and relax. I have a nice cup of tea. A nice cup of tea. And then he flings it at his chopper's face and is like, get me cola. <laughs> southern accent oh man also shout out to frankie slowly walking up to fukuro and fukuro being like oh is it gonna be another sissy punch and then he punches him super hard he's like sorry my previous punches were like panties or whatever he said (laughs) i love that Yes. Uh, So that was a very good fight. I liked that Frankie was willing to die just to take out his enemy. Yes. Um, Even looking back at the flashback scenes we got of him as a child, he always has been kind of a self-destructive, reckless kind of person. Yes. And so his goal isn't to win. His goal is to just make sure the other guy loses. And that's admirable. Certainly. Of all the people who fight, are fighting the CP9 members in this arc, you have the... Straw Hat members, five of them, and then you also have Frankie as an ally. Frankie feels like the most underhanded. Sanji doesn't seem like he would trick an opponent in a way, in a certain way. Zoro is very straightforward. Luffy's pretty straightforward. Like there have been scenes and clips and er- earlier examples of people being like, "We're pirates, of course we don't fight fair." But for the most part, the Straw Hats are pretty honorable. But Frankie is just a little gremlin. He is going to like look over there and then you look over there and he pulls out a rocket launcher and shoots you in the back like that's the sort of man that frankie is (laughs) except not that exactly because that would be underhanded and he's very direct no i think that i i think that frankie would tell someone to look over there and then attack them i just i could absolutely see him doing that okay yeah that's fair how did you like his homing missiles (laughs) With rain, with Chopper getting really excited, be like, are they are they cannonballs that fire the opponent no matter where they go? I've never heard of technology like that. And then Frankie starts running after him, and Chopper's like, "You mean you follow him? You're the homing <laughs> missile." That was hilarious. Was so I good. love how easily Chopper is impressed, and I love seeing that like lampshaded by. Oh no, it wasn't impressive at all. <laughs> it was so good, and I just I love that Chopper is the most childlike of the Straw Hats and he is just falling in love with all of Frankie's technology because, like, for the most part, you know, let's not gender stereotype or whatever, but a lot of kids really like, like, machines and transformations and and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I do also want to really quickly circle back. This is a thought that I had on Twitter some time ago, so, you know, if you're listening to this, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, but I just want to bring it up. 
AU where Frankie's not a cyborg. Instead, he's a wizard. He still <laughs> drinks cola, but he calls them elixirs. And the running joke would be, you mean cola, right? No, get me the elixir. He still dresses the same, but I like the idea of him being a wizard. And I think that these episodes further cement that because the different elixirs have different effects on his personality. No, I think that's fair. I like the idea of a hentai wizard. No, that came out <laughs> a wrong. A transforming wizard. I meant like a wizard pervert. Yeah, exactly. But I don't want to see hentai about a wizard. That would be weird for me to admit on my... Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> You're yes. welcome. Of the many times that we've brought up hentai, I have cut out every single instance of it from this podcast, so nobody knows of our deep, dark secrets. Have you really? We've never talked about it. That's the joke. Oh, ha 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 ha. <laughs> I'm a dumbass, my friends. <laughs> but no, the Frankie fight was very good. And I was satisfied mm. by the way that it ended. Every once in a while, you get a fight where you're like, all right, he punched the guy harder. That's cool, I guess. But he literally used um, Fukuro's. I have to pause to remember his name every time. But he literally used Fukuro's own attacks and momentum against him. And that's how he won. Yes. And I just love that. Oh, and the serious look he had on his face when when Fukuro was like, I've figured out a technique that'll definitely finish you in one blow. And then Frankie had this like super serious look on his face where he's like, I have two, brother. And it's like, ah, oh, man, that's spooky. I didn't know Frankie could be spooky. Yes. And he used a couple of attacks we've never seen before. He used beans left, which, <laughs> which cracked me up because I was imagining like a little tiny kitten paw just popping out of his hand. <laughs> uh, but no, it was just, it was beans. And did you see the sideburn attack where he flicked his sideburns like throwing stars? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. And then he also brought back centaur. Yeah, I thought that he only ever did that on top of the train, but nope, he second time. Yeah, and he had an attack where he dislocated his shoulders. That was the missile homing attack. And can I just say, that was weird visually. It reminded me of another character we'll meet a couple arcs later. Mm. I also really appreciate that if you noticed, he had like 35 or 36 battle tanks when he was younger that he built and that each one was like more destructive than the last. But when he takes off his shirt and his shoulders are exposed... BF is on his right shoulder, and then 36, 36 was on his left. He's, he's the battle Frankie. Yeah, I actually made that observation off mic, so you stole my observation. <laughs> All right, I didn't know if you were going to bring it up or not. You literally brought up the joint thing, and then you just kind of paused to let me say something. I forgot until just now. Earlier, we were talking about how sometimes the Weekly Planet co-hosts steal each other's jokes, so I was trying to make a joke about that. I'm sorry. It's cool. <laughs> But yeah, no, I love that he is the ba the new Battle Frankie. And it makes me wonder if you were to ever get an upgraded body, if we would see Battle Frankie 37 on it. Yeah, that would be interesting. Or maybe he could build something for Usopp, like a mecha armor for, for him, and then he would be the Battle Frankie 37. But he would be the Battle Usopp. <laughs> This is my newest creation. I call it the Battle Usopp 1, and it's just Usopp, like, behind a shield. <laughs> Wait, hang on. No, I just thought of something even better. Imagine all of the Battle Frankies, but they all have Frankie's face on them. <laughs> super, 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 super. Im imagine somebody having a nightmare. But Chopper. Chopper's having a nightmare <laughs> where all of these battleships are coming toward him with Frankie's face, and they're all yelling super, and then he just sits straight up in bed. Oh my goodness. See, all I can honestly imagine with lots of faces of the same character is now I'm just having Foxy flashbacks. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I have a question for you. Sure. Frankie is a cyborg. Yeah. So he's got human parts, he's got fleshy parts, and he's got robot business. Correct. If he gets injured, does Chopper take care of him or does Usopp help? <laughs> Uh, front half injuries, he repairs himself. Back half injuries, Chopper has to help him. I think that's how that works. Gotcha. Chopper is the butt cheek doctor. You know, absolutely. <laughs> I just saw my butt cheek doctor a couple of days ago, and he was saying that my butt cheeks were looking pretty good. You gotta They're pretty get... healthy, you know? <laughs> They're round. They're firm. <laughs> this took a turn. They're ripe. <laughs> They're ripe for the plucking. <laughs> Please don't pluck your butt cheeks, but do see your butt cheek doctor if that's something you need to do. Oh my goodness. God, Frankie has infected these episodes. Is it possible to talk about Frankie without talking about butt cheeks? I don't think so. No. I don't think so either. He puts them pretty, 
he puts them predominantly on display with his speedo. Yeah. You know? So I think if we're going to get away from this, we should move on to the other fight, which was Chopper and Kumidori. Yes. Uh, we didn't get the finish. P- we didn't f- see the ending of this fight, but we did get some interesting uh, back and forth between them. So there's certainly something to discuss. I can I just say my favorite part of this fight, even with my foreknowledge of like stuff that's coming up, is still Kumidori being in the fridge. And every time the fridge is open, yo yo, the door has clink. <laughs> yeah, he's so dramatic that he takes too much time to get his words out and he can't actually escape the fridge. Oh my goodness gracious. But no, we found out that he is not in fact a devil fruit user. It appears that well, not appears. He explained himself that he apparently has some kind of power over his body where he can you know, make his heart beat faster or slow down, I assume, or change his body temperature, but he uses it to grab people with his hair. And mm-hmm. so that's why he has, like, that octopus hair. But he insists that he's a lion, but he has, like, individual strands like octopus legs, so... I think that it's just part of the joke. Like, you're... It's so pathetic. You think you're a lion, but you're not. You're just an octopus man. My favorite scene visually from what we got of this fight was when his hair was pointing at Chopper. Oh, yeah. Because it all... And then his hair did the Shigan. Yes. That was neat. I really like that. I, that just makes me hope that, like, maybe we'll meet an octopus fisherman that learned CP9 techniques so that they could do, like, multiple, like, if they have multiple legs, they could do multiple Ron Kyakus. If they have multiple arms, they could do multiple Shigons. And that would be pretty great, you know? That would be pretty cool. It's really interesting seeing Fukuro and Kumidori fight specifically because they implement the five powers in unique ways that the rest of CP9 doesn't seem to do. If you can hear my cat meowing in the background, she She's just going to keep doing that because we kicked her out of the recording space. And honestly, like, she's a cat. She doesn't get to be on the podcast. I'm sorry, cat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so Fukuro does the finger pistol, but it's a punch. Yeah, and it was called, like, owl thrashing, I think. I can't remember. Uh, or no, it was, like, beast rush. Right. And so that was weird because does that mean he can blow a fist-sized hole in a person instead of a finger-sized hole? Is his whole fist the bullet? Mm. That's cool. And now Kumidori can do a thousand Shigan at once. (laughs) So I just really liked that. I also appreciated his control over his body means that he could eat all the food in the fridge and then immediately digest it. Yes. And Chopper being like, do it again. That th- Chopper being enamored with that was so great. I couldn't remember what his reaction to it was, but I thought for sure that he would be disgusted that this guy is like just dis- defying the laws of of the body. But no, he actually, after a moment of taking it in, he's like, oh no, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Oh, man. Chopper being like, do it again. And then Kumidori just obliges. He does it again. Yeah. Is he the most stupid CP9 member? (sighs) Okay, so are we including Spandam? Because obviously Spandam has the lowest intelligence of all of them. No, I think we should ignore Spandam. Okay. I think that Luchi and Kaku and Jabra are... You know, they're fairly intelligent. They're capable. Lucci especially. He, you know, he taped the fake nose on people so people would think it was Kaku and that sort of thing. Uh, Kaku and Jabra are kind of dumb. They fell for that whole giraffe (laughs) wolf thing for a bit, even though they're clearly trained assassins and their prey are right in front of them. But not as stupid as, yo, yo, the door is open. And then having it close on you again. Yeah. Like, oh my God. But also, Fukuro pretended that he was basically invisible, but was in plain sight of Chopper and then got punched <laughs> in the balls. So I don't know which of them are more stupid than the other. Yes, you are ignoring Khalifa, who I would rank as under Luchi, but above uh Jabra and Jabra Kaku. Jabra and Kaku, because Jabra and Kaku fell for the who's stronger, a trap or a wolf. Yeah, Khalifa doesn't, she really exudes, like, pure competence in, you know, how she, she knew to kind of, like, flirt with Sanji to get his guard down and that sort of thing. So I wouldn't say that she qualifies. It's definitely either Fukuro or Kumidori. Listeners, if you have an opinion on who is stupider, please, please let us know. Stupider? <laughs> But no, I I do think that Kumidori is pretty supremely stupid. He's so dumb. I just, I love, well, okay, no, I don't love. I hate it when a character has the strength to beat his opponents, but the writer gives them a flaw that is so exaggerated that they can't complete their goals. Like, the only reason he wasn't able to kill Nami and Chopper is because he does this 
yoy yoy i'm going to line up my attack i'm gonna i'm doing it i'm lining up my attack and giving you a chance to to counter my move i'm going to attack any minute now gadatsu was the same way i'm pretty sure that the only reason chopper was able to figure out how to beat him is because gadatsu spent so long being stupid that chopper was able to use that time wisely yes but Despite being stupid, he was still posing a serious enough threat to Chopper that Chopper did something we've never seen him do before. He took three rumble balls in the space of six hours. Correction. We have actually seen Chopper take multiple rumble balls within six hours. During the Davy Back filler fights, which is another case where people wrote filler and they're like, oh, let's just do this thing, who cares? But then later it turned out that canonically that was a big no-no. So the first one that I think a lot of people know about is Zora was able to cut through iron or steel, steel, steel. Uh, in one of the early, early filler arcs. And then there's this whole thing about him being unable to cut steel against Mr. One. And then in the filler arc of Davy back, it clearly shows Chopper being like, oh no, my first one wore off. Time to take a second. But that's not how second Rumble Ball works. The drugs mess with his system and they're too potent. And after taking two, he can't control his forms anymore. So he would jump forward and be like, all right, time to go into jump point so I can dodge the attack. And he turned into guard point. He'd be like, oh no, he has no mobility in guard point and he'd take the hit. So that was a good bit of comedy. And then He took a third one. He took a third one. Tell us about three rumble balls. We got a flashback of an unknown incident. We only saw the aftermath of whatever happened, but we learned from Dr. Doctorine. I almost got her and Hera look mixed up. But Doctorine tells us that the town was nearly destroyed and that the only word that you could describe Chopper was a monster. Which we know Chopper takes very personally. Yes, that was absolutely his trigger word when he first originally met uh, Usopp and Luffy and them. And he swore that he would never do it again. And the last thing we saw of the canon episodes was him saying, I'm sorry, Dr. Ean, I have to do it, and he takes a third. But we don't see what the result of that is, and... I, I, I have no idea, right? If I were trying to speculate without future knowledge, my guess would be, well, first one gives him multiple forms, second one gives him uncontrollable forms, so wouldn't the third one just be like he's, like, rapidly switching between all of them? Like, isn't that the only thing that makes sense? But, spoiler alert, that's not what's going to happen. I really, this is one of the things that I knew about before I even watched the series because of mm. your, look at this cool scene, look at this cool scene, look at that cool scene. Um, and every time I get to it, I get excited. So it's going to be good. I thought I remembered them showing his new like thing, at least in Shadow, but I think that might have been next time on One Piece. Yeah, I think they started to show like... I think they started to show things getting weird, but I don't know if it necessarily showed, like, the aftermath. Like, they're definitely waiting for that reveal. Uh, Oda does that quite a bit with a lot of his chapters and episodes and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But, no, that's really interesting. And what I really liked is Doctorine's comment about how it was like his devil fruit went wild. You turned to me and you were like, what happens if another person eats a, a rumble ball? And you're not the first person to ask. Everyone who's watched One Piece has probably wondered that. But A, what happens to other zones? B, what happens to Paramecias or Logias, like Luffy or Ace or anyone like that? What happens when they eat a devil fruit? Yeah. I don't know. When they eat a devil fruit, when they eat a rumble ball. When they eat a rumble ball and they have a devil fruit power. Could you imagine if Robin was like, I can't control my hands? <laughs> she tries to make <laughs> hands show up, but it's actually just like eyeballs and ears. This is a horrible joke. I'm sorry, but Sanji in the background would be like, I can't control my hands either. Oh, God. <laughs> That's perfectly in alignment with the the humor of the series. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see Lucci take even just one rumble ball, but I want to see monster gone wild Lucci. Uh, like Dr. Ian said, it turned Chopper into a monster. Chopper's a friven reindeer that ate the human human fruit. And he's we, a pretty gentle soul. Yeah, his... we know he's a doctor. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. But we know carnivores are the most vicious of the zone type users. So what kind of monster would Lucci be? Oh my god. Maybe. No, no, no. I For some reason I was thinking, what if uh, Lucci, Kaku, and Jabra all fused together Chimera style so you would have a wolf, giraffe, leopard man? But that's not really related to Rumble Balls. That's just more like terrible terrible science fiction not terrible but like horrifying science fiction okay so take take jabra yeah and take luchi mm-hmm. fuse them together at the middle 
Okay, so you get like a really long giraffe neck with a wolf head at the top. No, no, is that Kaku isn't here. Kaku okay, isn't here. Okay. Luchi and Jabra. Okay, you've got here. yourself cat dog. <laughs> but it's not a funny cat dog. It's a cat dog that hates itself and everything else, and it's gonna murder. <laughs> <laughs> this is cat dog after dark. My God, the cat dog! It's going wild. You've... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the implications. <laughs> Put the stripper pole down, Luchi. <laughs> You've okay. heard, you heard of Cat Dog. Now get ready for Leopard Wolf. <laughs> Luchi Jabra, would their fusion name be Lubra or <laughs> Jaku? No, and J- Jachi. Jachi. I like <laughs> Jachi go. because it doesn't have lube in it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny that that would be L U B R A. Lubra. How do you pronounce that? You Lubra. Can't. Lub- okay. Lubra. But no, it would be Lubra. No, so they're, we're going with the other one. We're going okay. with Juchi. Jubchi, Jubi? Uh, Jobchi. Jobchi. There we go. There we go. Um, speaking of Jabra, we did get the beginning of things are finally going to get serious because it was Goofster Town for a while. It was just a full episode of just messing around. <laughs> uh, Jabra and Kaku were at odds because they both wanted to be the one to finish off Zoro and Usopp. Mm -hmm. And Usopp goes, aha, yes, their chaos is our opportunity. Let us play them off one another. (laughs) And he goes, I wonder who is stronger, a giraffe or a wolf? Zoro, weren't you just saying who is stronger, a giraffe or a wolf? What are you talking about? I never said anything like that. Zoro is too stupid to participate. And so they start going at each other over which of them is stronger. And then Zoro, who again is extremely stupid, he rolled a one, let's be honest, that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. He put no stats into int or whiz at all. Uh, but he goes, oh, I see what you're doing. You want them to fight each other so we can get away. God damn it, Zoro. <laughs> and it just, you and your two brain cells in the corner, time out, right now. It just doesn't work. So then Usopp tries, I wonder who is cooler, a giraffe or a wolf. And that works for a second. But then when he wants to run away, Zoro goes, no, it's not going to distract them long enough. We need to do something else. And his first plan is, let's play rock, paper, scissors, and the loser will cut off their hand. Yeah. And Usopp says, no. And then Zoro rethinks and he goes, you know what? Maybe what we should do is cut off your hand because I can't afford to lose one. So just take the rock, paper, scissors out of the equation. Usopp doesn't like that plan either for some reason. (laughs) And Zoro was like, well, just take the hand and go to Chopper and Chopper will reattach it (laughs) because that's how bones work. You're just stuffed animals. You could trade hands easily. Um, (laughs) You've heard of face off. Now get ready for hand off. (laughs) But no, Zoro goes, okay, we got to actually fight these guys. If you don't like the hand cutting off plan, come here. And he makes Usopp his sword. Yes, he's holding Usopp like a sword. And then Usopp is holding the sword in his hands. And Usopp makes the shing sword sounds Mm. and it doesn't go well because every time Zoro tries to do one of his attacks he tries lion hunt and onigiri uh he basically leaves usopp vulnerable and then usopp gets punched in the face by the first time i think it was kaku second time it was chopper he gets punched by one of each and uh oof that's no good (laughs) but i love usopp as a sword i'm so impressed by his core strength to be able to hold mm, himself mm, rigid mm. like that Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also Im- impressed by Zora's ability to swing a full-grown man one-handed like a sword. That's that's pretty heavy, and he's not using both hands. It's one hand. How heavy do you really think Usopp is, though? Yeah, but, like, even if he's, say, like, what, 100 pounds? I'd say that's, like, the lower end of probably a healthy male weight. That's still 100 pounds. That is still 100 pounds. You're right. Uh, The other fight we just barely got a glimpse of the beginning of was uh, Khalifa and Nami. Yep. And Nami walks into the room and it's all steamy and there's a bath running and Khalifa's standing behind a screen and she's taking off her stockings. So Khalifa's just going to get in the bath, I guess. Uh, You mentioned earlier she decided to flirt with Sanji to get his guard down. This is just her flirting with Nami. Like, Khalifa's a bisexual queen. I guess so. I just... I really don't understand from a narrative point of view why she's doing this. Uh, Because she's an assassin. She's she's supposed to be killing them. Like, I don't know why she is doing this. I understand from Oda's point of view, because he's a pervert, and it's like, oh, it's two women and there's a bath and it's so suggestive. But why? It's an easy excuse to get her into the bath so that Nami can use the thunder tempo and just, like, 
be done oh, with yeah, the fight. Oh, yeah, electrocutor, okay. Would be my guess. But no, I, I think it's mostly rooted in perversion. I like to believe that the story reason is that her method of assassination is via seduction, which is kind of an obvious route to go with the female assassin. But, you know, why not? Is Bluno going to seduce people? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> So her her method is seduction. So that makes sense. She tried to seduce Sanji. Now she's trying to seduce Nami. I don't know how effective it's going to be. Does she know what their different predilections were? Did she know that Sanji would be seduced by getting to mansplain how to make tea? Whereas <laughs> Sa- Nami is seduced by, oh, it's a naked woman in a bathtub. <laughs> you have to be very forward with Nami. Yeah, but... okay. Well, because Nami is a lesbian, so she can't tell when you're flirting unless you are literally not wearing any clothes. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I myself have never been a lesbian. <laughs> I'm sorry, that has implications. I've never been a lesbian either, but I hear stories on Twitter. Mm. So here's something that I do think is kind of interesting. Kaku and Jabra are so at odds with each other that when Kaku attacked, Jabra got mad like, you tried to attack me, even though it was clear that that wasn't what happened. So they're they're at each other's throats, which I kind of like because it feels like the villains have the same relationship as Zoro and Sanji. But at the same time, think of the hilarious hijinks that could happen if Zoro had been handcuffed to Sanji instead. <laughs> like, at that point, you wouldn't be able to have Sanji fight Khalifa. You wouldn't have him give his line about chivalry and never kicking a woman. But seriously, if you're going to have any two people handcuffed together... Sanji and Zoro is the obvious answer. I think if I had to guess why they Oda went with Usopp instead of Sanji, A, it was to get Sanji in with Khalifa, but B, we already kind of had Sanji and Zoro are forced into the close combat. Oh, for the Davy back fight? For the Davy back fight, yeah. Sanji was the ball, and that's kind of the same as Zoro being chained to him. It was just a metaphorical chain instead of a literal one. I could, I could see that. But... Yes, it would still be funny. Yes, I would watch it and laugh about it. And now I want an arc where the Straw Hats get arrested and they're chained together (laughs) and Zoro and Sanji just happen to get paired off. Luffy and Nami and she cannot caution him enough. He's just like, I'm going to punch that giant iron spiky ball. She's like, you idiot, you're going to break your hand. You're going to have the spear go through your hand. You're going to die. And he's just running off. Yes. Uh, Who would you pair up? Chopper with. Chopper and Robin, maybe, because it's like the mom and baby. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I actually I actually wouldn't mind Frankie and Robin because it seems like he's just huge himbo energy and she seems very thoughtful, you know? So like that interaction would also be kind of interesting. Oh, God, Although he would probably shit. just be like, he'd probably just like press a button, his arm would detach, and then he'd just like go run off and she would be looking at it like, uh... This cuff is sea prism stone. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. She would just sit down and wait for Luffy. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do something. Oh, Perfect. man. Speaking of Robin, uh, you made an observation that Chimney is the same age currently that Robin was when all of her stuff went down. Absolutely. So Robin was eight during the O'Hara incident, and all of her wanted posters are like, oh, she sunk six warships at the age of eight. Chimney is also eight, and as you pointed out, they both, in direct or indirect ways, were opposing the government. So, is that a coincidence? Probably, but that also seems like a really strange coincidence. I really like the idea of a wanted poster for Chimney, and she's just grinning, and Gombe is there, and Gombe is just grinning, and it's like, she destroyed Eni's lobby at the age of eight, (laughs) single-handedly. Because they can't admit that pirates were there. Is it more embarrassing to admit that pirates broke into this sanctum sanctorum and completely wrecked house, or that a little girl did it? I think little girl, because you can explain that as, like, no one took her seriously and she probably, like, snuck in or whatever. Imagine if they tried to get a picture of her for the wanted poster and instead Gonbe got right in front of her. So the wanted poster is for, it has Gonbe's picture, but the wanted poster is Chimney. That'd be so good. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right. So that about wraps up everything over here. And next episode, we'll be watching four episodes of the anime 293, 294, 295, and 296, which means that we're coming up on 300 episodes of One Piece. Maybe we'll have to do something with that. I don't know. Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, So in the meantime, everyone, have a great morning, evening, or afternoon, whatever the case may be. Love you. Bye. Drink water. 
So ends the next leg of the King of the What Now adventure. We're sad to see you go, but we'll be here next week. If you crave some social interaction with us in the meantime, you can find us on all sorts of different media. We have Gmail, Patreon, and Tumblr. All of those are King of the What Pod. King of the What Pod at gmail.com, patreon.com slash King of the What Pod, King of the What Pod dot Tumblr dot com. Our Twitter handlers are a little bit different. You can reach me at K O T W N underscore pod. And you can contact me, Curtis, at Pirate Cohost. Also, please take a moment to rate and review our podcast on whatever platform you're using to listen. Not only will this help others find the podcast, but your constructive feedback will help us improve the show as we go. Thanks so much for giving us a listen. Until next time, follow your dreams and protect your treasure. Remember, it doesn't need to be literal treasure.